If you have one of our rentals and wondering what the heck this thing is, this video is for you. We're going to go over settings for easy operation and reduce any pesky errors you might be having. Because who wants to deal with that? All right, so we're going to go over three basics right now. So the first is strip clean cleave. How to actually place the fiber in here and what you need to do to have a successful splice. So as you can see, I already have a fiber placed in here. And the end of that fiber is placed in between the electrodes, which are these spikes, and that blue block, that V groove. All right, so this splice sleeve, um, for my purposes, I don't really have to worry a whole lot about this because this fiber cable is not going 30, down, 30 miles down the road like your project. Um, so make sure you put these on ahead of time. Um, so we're going to do the strip clean cleave. So a lot of times we hold the fiber pointed up. We're going to strip off approximately an inch, inch and a half of fiber. Mine just broke, that's okay. And then the clean. Make sure you're using uh, lymph-free wipes, isopropyl alcohol. Pinch on that fiber. You may have heard that squeak. And then we go put it in our cleaver. When we put in the cleaver, um, the colored jacket, we want that to be right around the 12 mark or the 10 mark on the cleaver. Doesn't have to be too precise at this point, especially if you're doing standard splices. If your project does call for splice on connectors, then you might want to um, read those instructions to find out exactly what length you need to do your cleave. So as I go to place it in here, um, again, putting that fiber about halfway in between the electrodes and the V groove, I'm going to close this chuck and we are going to be ready to splice. So when we're splicing um, fiber, there's a lot of different settings on this machine to make things super automated or to make it a little bit more manual where we, you have to open and close different parts of this machine. Right now it's um, arcing, so that is now um, spliced together and gave me an estimated loss of .01 dB. Um, looks like there might be a little bit of a bulge in there, but we'll worry about that um, in a different time in another video. So that is now spliced. Now I want to go through the second part. So you just saw strip clean cleave. Number two, what we want to go through is the initial settings. So first setting you want to go to is splice mode. If you choose auto, every single time this machine does a burn it's going to check to see what kind of fiber in here is it multi-mode is it bending sensitive is it g.654 or is it g.652 um, so that is how we try to send these machines out every single time but if you want the machine to operate a little bit faster and you know you're splicing 652 single mode fiber every single burn which is probably the most common fiber in the telecom industry that's the go-to setting. Tons of different um, fiber options built in here um, for having the best, fastest splicing. So that is some of the basic splice settings. Now, another setting I just want to touch on quickly is we also have our heater mode. And based on what size splice sleeve you're using, um, select that heater mode. Uh, the most common is 60 millimeter. Now the last part of this video that I want to go through is what happens when we run into some issues, okay? So I'm going to get that fiber out of here, close this hood. You're having issues, this machine keeps barking at you, it's not happy. So go to your home screen, maintenance, and this will do a diagnostic test on itself. I'm going to get it started right away because um, it does take a little bit of time. Um, so what it's doing right now is it's basically fixing itself or diagnosing itself to make sure that it's okay. Um, and this will help reset the motors and help you diagnose if anything else needs to happen. So I did cheat. I've got fibers stripped clean cleaved already. So once this is on to the next stage, it's going to ask me to insert fibers. And we don't, if, if you go through this self-diagnosis, 
and you're like, okay, there's something going on and I don't know what to do. That's okay. You're not stuck with this machine, please. You can give us a call. We have a hotline number, which will reach out to a number of individuals on our team and um, they'll be able to walk you through this process or any other issues that may be going on. So feel free to reach out to us. The number should be on that case along with our line card. Otherwise, uh, 262-208-7794 or you can email us as well. That will be in the uh, information down below. Now, um, AFL's tech support is amazing as well. Um, if you look on the side of your machine, their phone number is there. Give them a call as well. They're very good. Um, their 800 number is 866-3602. And I'm confident that uh, we'll get your resolve. If time is not on your side, we have got your back to keep you on the go. And we will uh, send you out a replacement splicer. That's part of the benefit of renting. So this machine is still going through its self-diagnosis. All right, so we're progressing through this screen. The motor calibration typically takes the longest, um, but it is good to go. We're checking fusing power to make sure that this thing has enough oomph to burn. You're going to see a whole bunch of crazy flashes on here. That's A-OK. -okay. Your battery is low um, you might have issues here so that might be one of your issues so this battery indicator right here um, tells me that uh, we got plenty of battery and you can also plug in right here on the side to get that charged um, but walk through the self-diagnosis give us a call you got our information hope your project goes well if you're still having any issues please reach out to us Call that AFL number. We are here to support you to keep you on the go.